Hi there, I'm Alex. It's a beautiful day outside, and this is Real Talk. So I want to talk a bit today about The Lord of the Rings. I just finished my yearly rereading, and they're on my mind. Um, and specifically, The Lord of the Rings films by Peter Jackson that came out in 2001, 2002, and 2003. Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy is a landmark in cinema. It set the style for fantasy movies for years to come and raised the bar for special effects in the same way that Star Wars did in 1977. Gollum, the first photorealistic CG motion-captured creature, introduced the world to those silly suits with ping-pong balls taped all over them. So whenever you have a movie adaptation of such a popular book series, you always have the divide over the book purists and the moviegoers. There's some complaint from the book camp that the movie isn't faithful to the source material. I'm talking mostly about the exclusion of Tom Bombadil, the flighty but powerful nature spirit that the hobbits first encounter early in their journey, and the final chapters of The Return of the King, The Scouring of the Shire, where the hobbits return from Gondor to find the darkness has penetrated their home and they must cleanse it without the help of their former allies. These complaints arise, like I said, from the book readers, and those who have read the books will be comforted to know that the books still exist in their original form. And in my opinion, the expanded role of Arwen, the even star, was an excellent choice in a story that was lacking strong female characters, and that more than makes up for these small omissions. A lot has already been said about these movies, so I won't say much more. The great work of these movies, in my opinion, is that they greatly helped bolster the shared mythology of Middle-earth in the English-speaking world. Even those people who have not seen the films or read the books will be aware, through this cultural osmosis of the characters and themes from the Ring Trilogy. And so Sauron's great flaming eye and Frodo's faithful companion Sam become metaphorical currency that we can exchange with each other freely without need for explanation. It's impossible to talk about the Lord of the Rings without talking about hobbits. To me they're like tiny rocky Balboas. They're continually pummeled physically and mentally. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's where their strength lies. Wiser, stronger, older people in these movies allow themselves to become tangled up in complexity and are weakened because of it. Some give up hope completely. To build on this, there's something very zen-like about hobbits. Concerned with food and drink and gardening and good company and observing the dark moving to the world without letting it come inside and really affect them. In dark times, maybe we can be more like hobbits. So if I've kindled your interest, we have all three films on DVD. And if you'd like to dive a little deeper, and I would recommend it, we also have the books here as well. So come on down to the Monroe Free Library and check them out. <laughs>